Hello everybody, I am Dr. Deeksha Pandey and you are watching Urogynecology for Beginners. As you all know and as the name suggests, this channel is essentially meant for urogynecology. However, after I posted a few of the abdominal hysterectomy, the open abdominal hysterectomy videos, I realized actually those videos were for the patient who presented with urinary symptoms and required an open abdominal hysterectomy. However, I realized that how much you like those videos and how much supposedly those videos are helping you to gain confidence and to practice. So on your request, as per my last teaching video, today I'm posting a video on total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo ovariotomy. As few of you have requested, this is a teaching video so that with my PGs, you can also learn step-by-step -step surgery together. I feel, what is the use of knowledge if it is not meant to be shared? What is the use of a skill if it is not meant to be transferred? So I hope you learn some skill, you gain some knowledge after this video. Well begin is half done, they say. So planning your first incision plays a great role. For abdominal hysterectomy, the incision should be placed one finger breadth above the pubic symphysis. Unlike caesarean, where you go two fingers above the symphysis. As in caesarean, we just have to reach the UV fold. While in hysterectomy, the aim is to go below the lower margin of cervix. Always start with a small incision. During surgery, if you feel any movement, you have an option to increase it. But if your incision is big and later on you want to decrease it, there is no way to do it. Skin with a 23 number blade and later the subcutaneous fat or tissue can be cut with a monopolar cautery. When you see the shining white rectus sheath, hold it up with two Alice clamps on either side and lift it up so that the heat from the cautery is not dissipated directly below in case by any chance if the cautery cuts deep. Then go on the two sides and stretch it or cut it, whatever seems comfortable at that moment. Remember to go to the end of the incisions, try to utilize as much of space as possible in the skin incision that you have given. Go up and create a plane between the rectus sheath and the muscle. The midline portion you will have to cut either with a scissor or a cautery. For peritoneum, I prefer to tease it with the help of my fingers and it's open. Pull the uterus out gently to bring it under vision. Look at the ovaries. Both ovaries are having cysts which look benign. So the decision was taken to do at abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo ovariotomy. To hold the uterine fundus with the bulldog, we first infiltrate it with diluted adrenaline and then clamp it with the help of bulldog. It gives a really good traction throughout the procedure. Hold the 
hold all the three corneal structures together that means the fallopian tube, ovarian ligament and round ligament and clamp them with the help of a straight clamp and this clamp should be close to the uterine edge to prevent backflow. Now as we are planning to remove the tubes and ovaries also in this case, the second clamp will be lateral to the ovary and it should include infundibulo pelvic ligament as well as the round ligament and it must go till the edge of the another clamp which we have put initially at the cornua to prevent the backflow. So the difference if you ask me while doing a TH or THPSO only one difference is there. There the first clamps after the corneal clamp to prevent the backflow we put holding the three structures that includes tube, ovarian ligament and the round ligament. Rather than that we are going lateral to the ovary in this case and putting the clamp on the infundibular pelvic ligament up to the round ligament. And exactly the same steps will be repeated on the other side. So the curved clamp has caught hold of the round ligament and the infundibular pelvic ligament. Remember to stay as close to the ovary as possible while clamping the infundibular pelvic ligament in order to prevent any injury to the ureter. Cut the tissue above the medial clamp in the same L-shaped fashion so that you reach till the tip of the lower clamp. Suturing is again transfixation with the single vicral number one suture material. First bite at the tip and second at the junction of the lower two-third and upper one-third. While tying, first knot is a double throw where you have to cross your hands. You learn it slowly. And second is the single throw followed by a third knot which is again a single throw. If there are open whistle ends, I prefer to take care of them then and there. That's what I want you also to learn so that you don't have to fiddle with the bleeding pedicles later. And once you have taken care of the cornua of both the sides, what you see here is the loose fold of peritoneum, the UV fold. Try to appreciate the bladder. The yellow fat will guide you. What you have to do here is just above the bladder onto the UV fold, you have to give a nick. For that, you hold the loose fold of peritoneum with Alice forceps and with the help of a scissors, give a bold nick on this lifted peritoneum. Immediately, you will see the loose areolar tissue here. Go in that plane above the cervix on both the sides. Pushing the loose area tissue down, you have to reach on both sides up to the round ligament or up to the first clamp so that the entire peritoneum can be pushed down. After this, Clamp the uterine vessels with the posterior peritoneum at the level of internal os. And how do you identify internal os? This is the junction of the pear-shaped body of the uterus 
with the cylindrical cervix. Posteriorly, if you want to see, below this you can identify the two merging uterosacral ligaments at the posterior surface of the cervix. So clamp it once with the curved clamp and second time with another curved clamp. To prevent the backflow, you can put an artery or a straight clamp or even a curved clamp. Cut in between, leave a bit of tissue with the clamp to prevent its slippage. And again, convert it into an L-shaped incision by turning your hand which is holding the scissors. Single transfixation suture is enough for the uterine artery too. The technique is same. Keep the loop in between the two metals and tie three knots. First with two throws, second and third single throw. Release both the clamps one by one, first the lateral one, then the medial. Now on the other side, I will explain you slowly. So identify the internal os and then clamp the uterine vessels with the posterior peritoneum at the level of internal os with the help of two curved clamps up to the cervix. You can go up to the cervix and you can slip your clamp back and hold it tight. To prevent the backflow, we use a straight clamp on the uterine side. Cut in between the clamp which we have used to prevent the backflow and the medial clamp in a flowering manner. Make it a L-shaped incision by changing the turn of your hand. Then transfix it. The first bite should be taken at the tip of the lower clamp, the second at the junction of lower two-third and upper one-third. This is the first knot. Usually we prefer to put two throws and then change your hand to make it a good square knot. knot should be tight. Your hysterectomy is as good as your knots. Release the clamp slowly. The assistant will do it for you. Then the second knot which is a single throw. Followed by a third knot which is again a single throw. Next is the uterosacral ligament. To identify the uterosacral ligaments, you have to see the posterior surface of the cervix. The two uterosacral confluence in the middle of the posterior part of the cervix. When you are putting a clamp and it is a straight clamp, see that you are not holding bubble posteriorly or bladder anteriorly. Safety first. You can trace the ureter here. It crosses the iliac vessels from lateral to medial sides and you can trace it up till uterosacral ligament. However, in each and every hysterectomy, we do not recommend this. Appendix is also showing here. So there is no need to trace the iliac vessels and the ureter in every hysterectomy you do. If you are staying close to the uterus and the ovaries and giving good traction, there is no risk of injuring the ureters in a normal case where there are no additions as in endometriosis and malignancy. 
to keep a little bit of tissue with the uterosacral ligaments from the cervix. I prefer to use knife for cutting the uterosacral ligaments. And here again, we will put a transfixation suture with Vicryl number one. Only for this pedicle, we keep one end long and you know the answer why. So that we can tie the uterosacral ligaments with the vaginal vault and prevent vault prolapse later on. This is the sigmoid colon. See how close it is while we are clamping the uterosacral ligaments. So, especially on left side, actually it is good practice on both sides to lift the uterosacral ligaments with one finger and then clamp it. As I was telling you earlier, I prefer to cut the uterosacral ligament with the help of a knife. If you want, you can use scissors also. You should make it a point that the entire uterosacral should be cut till the tip of the clamp. Then transfix it with the help of Vicryl number 1. Same transfixation suture, first bite at the tip, next bite at the junction of lower two-third and upper one-third. The suture should always come in same direction. If the first time you have passed the needle from posterior to anterior, next time also it should be posterior to anterior for a transfixation suture. The loop should come in between the two metals. The first metal is the clamp and the second one being the needle. If you follow this, your loop will fall exactly where it should and make a nice pedicle. Once the uterosacral ligaments have been taken care of, the next clamp is for the vaginal angle. It helps to separate the uterine cervix from the vagina. If you are lucky and the cervix is not much bulky, you will be able to approximate or even overlap the clamps on the two sides. If you are not able to do so, that's also fine. You can hold the in-between area as you cut with the help of a long Alice forceps or even a straight cocker. As the uterus with the cervix has been detached now, we have to secure the cuff of the vagina and the vaginal angles. The first priority here is to secure the vaginal angles. In-between tissue can be taken care of later. And why it is important to be careful about this vaginal angle is the presence of descending cervical artery here 
विच मे बी द कॉज ऑफ हेमरेज मच मोर फ्रीक्वेंटली देन द यूट्राइन आर्ट्री वेन देर आर केसेस विच ब्लीड पोस्ट ऑपरेटिवली कॉज इन हीमोपेरिटोनियम समटाइम्स योर क्लैम्प माइट स्लिप एज इट इज हैपनिंग ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड सो देर इज नथिंग टू वरी कैच होल्ड ऑफ द विजाइना विद अ स्ट्रेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट इट कैन बी एन एलिस फॉजिप्स I prefer to use a cocker clamp a straight cocker for a good grip of vagina Secure the angle I told you the angle is more important than the central part of the vagina secure it properly with the help of a transfixation suture knots are very important and even more important is the tightness of the knot the same suture material which we have used to tie the vaginal angle of the left side is then being continued to close the remaining vault in an interlocking running fashion now while closing this vault one tip which i want to give you is that try to include the posterior peritoneum in your suture line while closing the vault sometimes the edge of peritoneum is the only one that keeps on bleeding after you have perfectly closed the vault very important point here that when the surgeon is closing the vault the assistant should follow it and follow it tightly posteriorly you have to be aware that just below the vault line is the reflection of sigmoid colon so keep on seeing that also and retract it with the help of a posterior retractor while you are closing the vault as you reach the other end that is now the right side you don't have to tie a separate knot you can just tie it with the suture of the lateral angle of the vagina which actually you have tied earlier with the uterosacral ligaments and the surgery is finished you can trace the ureter once again if you want to and see if any bleeding is there and if the ureters are perfectly in place they will be because we have not gone anywhere close to the ureters we have always remained very close to the ovaries and very close to the uterus this is the final view and after this you cut the vault sutures there is no bleeding just for the sake of teaching we are just putting a gel foam inside so if there is minimal ooze gel foam takes care of that oozing post operatively and then i prefer to close the rectus abdominis i have told you before also why i do it i won't repeat it again and rectus sheath one suture is enough in a box fashion if you tie it in a figure of eight manner or just like a simple interrupted kind of suture there is the risk 
that it will tear off the muscle however if you put a box suture there is no risk of tearing as the shearing force is not across the muscle fibers but is parallel to it while you tie the knot and that's it hysterectomy with bilateral selping or ovariotomy is over now you can go ahead close the rectus sheath and close the skin in a soft cuticular fashion thank you Thank you.